to, uh, as I told before, trying to work in uh, uh, recyclable monolayer films that could pack this three, these three different products. And we found that that was really, really a challenge. And we realized that um, it was really complicated to find the right packaging or the right film that could be able to uh, be recyclable um, and just by using one film and, and, and trying to also to achieve these three firm products. Uh, next, next slide. Uh, first thing it was because uh, all the different packagings that uh, are already used for the three different products uh, were really different. Uh, for the chips, uh, the current packaging is a printed variant multi-layer structure based on metallized film. Um, the second one for the breadcrumbs is a printed multi-layer structure based on polyolefins. And the third one, it's a tray, uh, it's a monomaterial based on polyolefin and then a multi-layer structure film. So it's like we have different, different packaging and needs and a lot of things to do in relation with new material uh, development in order to be able to uh, achieve all the targets that uh, this different product needs. And this slide. Next slide. So, uh, as I said before, uh, the main thing uh, or the first thing that we did it was try to check which is the which was the current material that uh, is being used for packaging this product to evaluate which was the barrier properties for water vapor, also for oxygen. Uh, in and also uh, another thing that was really important is. Uh, to see uh, which was this, the, the current cell life of the product to see if, if we were going to be able to achieve same cell life product or we need to modify something. So uh, we decided that we were going to uh, try to obtain a, a packaging that could um, be uh, applied instead of uh, the current ones. So for that, uh, what we have done is uh, to develop different alternative packaging that we have been now developed and now we have been validated in order to see if we are able to achieve uh, the end user um, uh, expectations of and, and the product. Next slide. So based on 100% uh, bio-based packaging using um, barrier coatings and also active coatings, the, the structures that our uh, refugal uh, project uh, has um, proposed are the next one that are in the next slide. Uh, I'm going to discuss a little bit where, where our thought and why we um, uh, agree to develop these different structures. First thing it was for chips and our idea was to try to obtain a coating, uh, sorry, a structure that could be able to, uh, to be recyclable. As you know, PET, we already has mentioned that it's uh, the material that uh, it has uh, the capability, at least in Europe, to be recyclable, to be recycled. Also for biopolyethylene, but it also has a flow to, to be, um, to be re recovered. And, and then another different option that it was compostable, okay? Um, both structures have been developed uh, thinking that we can use a barrier coating in the inner side uh, based on PEA, which uh, uh, it's a coating, which is a, a material that has a promising barrier uh, uh, properties. And, and, and then last, like a, a, as a second strategy to use active coatings in, in case that we are not able to achieve uh, the barrier coatings that the, the product um, need for being able to be on market at uh, the, 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 the time that the, the, the end user needs. And this is the strategy that we have been uh, developing for the, the different products to see if with uh, barrier coating uh, we can uh, achieve the, the results and if not uh, to add the extra active coating to um, to, to achieve the cell life that is needed for, for the product. So that has been done also for, for the breadcrumbs and also for, for the chicken. In the case of the chicken, um, it's a little bit different because the cell life of this product is 12 days. 
So that means that the barrier properties is they are not so important, but for sure, it, uh, as you should know, uh, it is more important on all the micro microbiologic uh, uh, part. So here, um, the only alternative was to use the, the active coating. Next slide. Uh, in, regarding the active coatings, um, as I told you before, we have used two different um, uh, or three different materials. One is the bacteriophages that uh, I will mention later on. And the other two uh, compounds that we have been using are approved uh, substances, natural substances. One of them uh, was uh, volatile and the other one none. Um, and the thing is that uh, in the case of the breadcrumbs and the chips, um, we have been working with volatile compounds that has been uh, micro-encapsulated uh, to develop a coating that it can be uh, printed by using printing technologies like uh, flexography and gravure. And the other one, uh, it is um, um, for, for the chicken. And in this case, it, uh, it's a natural compounds Compound that is that is not volatile and it works when it gets in, in direct contact with the chicken. Uh, both coatings are water-based coatings, um, and and uh, which are uh, like a sustainable uh, coatings for being applied in in the in the in the printing industry. Next slide. And then the other one is the bacteriophage. Uh, uh, coating that we have been also developed. Um, uh, this is something that um, were discussed in our last session. In fact, this is one of the sketch notes that we took from, from last session that I found really, really interesting to share with you today. And in this case, um, it was quite complicated to develop a coating like itself because uh, bacteriophages uh, cannot be alive uh, when you put it, them in, in a, into a coating. So they only can be alive when, because at the end they are alive uh, um, um, compounds. So we have uh, been using them um, just in water and add them in a, into a path. And that path has been used inside of the chicken um, packaging and in order to, to be used as, as an antimicrobial um, uh, substance. Next slide. In relation with the PGA, uh, here, as I told you before, PGA is not um, a material that it can be dissolved in any printing solvents. So that was, was a, a big challenge because we found that uh, maybe we couldn't achieve our um, barrier coating uh, solution that it was needed for uh, achieving the, the, the barrier properties that our packaging needs. So we still continue working in the PEA hotmail application that we believe is the best solution to use, to use that material because um, as it cannot be used as a, as a, a printing coating, um, it can be used um, in, a, uh, in a extrusion process using it uh, in, in his melt form where you can apply a continuous coating on paper, on any substrate in order to have this uh, barrier. So this is how we are um, thinking about, about applying our, our coating in our final packaging. Next slide. In relation with uh, the films production, because one of the first things is uh, we need to produce our films and then to apply our coatings and then uh, in some cases to do the thermoforming and in, in other cases uh, just uh, do the packaging. So here, what we have been using different equipments. First thing that we have been using is with the PHA, we have to do some blends with PLA in order to obtain some uh, films that can be used in the, in the final packaging application. Um, uh, so the, for the first step, you need to do the compound. The compound is uh, to mix the PLA and to mix the PHA that we have obtained in the project. Second step, it is to obtain the seeds. Um, and, and for that, you need a uh, extrusion process. And, and we also have developed the, bio, the biopolyester, uh, which has been also been extruded 
in, in, this, in, in a seed extrusion process. And then we also have developed um, some uh, biopolyethylene material that has been uh, performed in a blow extrusion process to obtain also the films. Next slide. Then all these material have been uh, laminated and then printed using a lamination of printing equipment, as, as you can see in, this, in the first uh, picture. This is a, a semi-industrial equipment that we have at the class, uh, where you are able to combine different materials and also apply different coatings uh, by flexography, uh, gravure, and also hot melt application. Uh, for that, uh, for that, with this equipment, we have been able to perform the, the, the different structures for the breadcrumbs and also for the for the uh, tips. And and then we also have been using uh, the spray coating. In this case, it's not uh, an industrial equipment, but uh, it's a process that can be applied in an, in an industrial process with no problem. That is the spray coating. And that has been used for applying the active coating to the, to the chicken, to the chicken trays. And then one of the things is that we have been perform, thermoforming all the trays that we have been uh, or thermoforming the, the, the material to obtain the trays for, for the chick. Next slide. And then in relation with uh, the characterization of them, uh, okay, one of the main things that we have been taking all the time it is the barrier properties, um, because before going to the next step, uh, we have been doing in a laboratory, um, we have been obtaining materials at a laboratory scale and measuring barrier properties to be sure that um, their material has the, 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 the properties that we, that we need for the final patient. Another important thing it was to be sure that all the materials that we develop, they have the mechanical properties that they should have for being able to, to be used in a multi-layer packaging. So uh, we have been uh, aware that we need an, an structural material with all the, the, the mechanical properties that should have. Also the, bar the barrier material that in, in our case it was coating. And then also the uh, thermosealing properties that is need that is need for some uh, packaging application in order to be a, a seal. Okay. Um, another thing is that uh, in the case in some cases where the final uh, packaging are compostable or are designed for being compostable, uh, uh, we are testing now the compostability of them. And in the case that we have been able to design recyclable uh, packaging structures, that is the case for, for, the, for the chips, we are also performing the res some recyclable, recyclability test in our pilot plants here also at in class. And then we are also studying a product cell life um, um, that has been performed with um, product at a laboratory uh, level in, in INEA and also in, in, in IRIS, that they are the ones that are developing the coating, uh, the active coatings. And also at the end, they will be tested by the end users to uh, tell us if uh, the, the packaging that we have developed also meet their packing lines. So we also need to think that we, all the things that we develop we need also to meet um, uh, not only the, the properties for the final packaging, but also need to be tested in real packing uh, lines to see if they uh, perform similar to the, 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 the current ones, or if there is some change that need to be done in order to achieve um, the performance that the final end user needs. Next slide. So uh, I will, I will, um, I wanted to finish my uh, presentation just with uh, co comment some uh, strategies and consideration that, in my opinion, we need to follow when we need to, when we think about developing new sustainable packaging. And for sure, this is something that uh, will open our discussion afterward. So first thing is um, we need to think not only about what is we are going to pack, to pack. 
okay, it's not only about the product, but we really need to think also about the end of life of our packaging to see, um, to see how we are going to handle that, okay? Um, when we can use a recyclable material, for sure all, all of us know that it is like a must, if we can use recyclable material for our packaging structures, let's do it. If not, let's see if bio-based material can be an option. And when we are thinking about sustainable packaging, it is important to think that we are not talking about in, um, environmental sustainability, but also social sustainability and economical sustainability. So it's like sustainable packaging has three different legs and we need to think about the three of them, not only the, the, the food uh, print, um, uh, the carbon footprint, okay, and all the LCA. We need to think the different uh, impacts that our new packaging should have. Uh, we need also to think that there are a lot of new material approaches that they don't behave like, like old ones. And that means that maybe we need to think about different process, more complex process. That means that we are used to, just to maybe to, to obtain a material by a co-extrusion and that's all. Maybe we need to combine different technologies in order to achieve a better, uh, a more sustainable packaging solution. And that there are a lot of new technologies that are coming and a lot of, a lot of research that are being performed in order to improve a, a, a bio-based material because as we know, they don't have a, the, 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 the same barrier properties or mechanical properties as the petrol-based. So, there are a lot of new technologies that will come uh, to, we will see uh, very in a certain period of time, like, like it is plasma, electron beam. We also need to think about uh, different coatings based on, on um, uh, I, meta, me, like metallization on different uh, coatings that we can apply in order to achieve uh, our, our, uh, the material performance. And, and I think this is, this is all by, by me. And now I would like to open your, your I would like to open this uh, as an open discussion. And I would like to hear your thoughts about that or, or, or on, on our, another thing that you want to, to comment. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Lorena, for this in-depth uh, look at the various approaches that RefiCoats has used. And yeah, I really like your uh, recommendations for the strategies that we need to take, you know, bear in mind uh, moving towards more sustainable packaging. And yeah, I think this will be a great launchpad for our discussion. Um, we did have uh, some great questions. And uh, so, Anna Maria and Mette, I wanted to invite you, maybe uh, Anna Maria first, if you would like to um, ask your question uh, to Lorena. I'm taking you off mute. Okay, thank you. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. Great. great. Thank you, Lorena. That was very, very interesting. Really enjoying these two days. Um, I'm uh, from Chagask in Ireland, and my background is not bioplastics, so just to, to qualify that first. I work in, in meat research and one area that we've been focusing on is revalorizing meat co-products or I won't call them byproducts, but the lower value are waste streams. And one of the applications that we have been working on is, is using an animal protein to develop a, a, to us seems to hold potential for a bioplastic. But yeah. um the, it's it's a water-based process in that it's solubilized in water, um, yeah. and so we dry it with heat. But we apply with a novel technology that we apply to make the the mechanical properties and so on uh, more robust and and better suited. We would hope to being used as a bioplastic. But in, I'm interested in particular. You mentioned it there at the end of your your talk about the different technologies that may need to be combined into developing these new materials. Um, I'm interested to get your opinion on, you know, a, a water-based uh, product coming into a plastic production line. Could you see potential for that or do we need to go back and look at different ways of developing uh, the product? No, in fact, I mean, a, a water-soluble uh, material, I think it's very convenient. 
Uh, here in, 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 in nine plus, we are working with a lot of different materials that are soluble. And they are really convenient because they can help to separate different materials. If they can use like a coating in the middle between two different materials. And then when you um, go, uh, when this material go into a recycling process, you can dissolve okay. that material and separate material. So um, I think they are a very promising uh, materials and we are here, we are developing a lot of coating based on proteins from different uh, waste streams and different um, uh, byproducts or, or, or from, from waste. And, yeah. and also we are also working with some um, uh, petrol based uh, polymers that we are also looking for for the same application. And for sure, if you are working with a protein, you also will have an oxygen barrier property, mm -hmm. which is very convenient to, to be using. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a good coating, not only because you can use them for, for being able to separate the, the, the different layer for a multi-layer uh, packaging, but also because it has a, a good barrier properties for oxygen. So that it's really important for some uh, product applications. Okay, great, thank you. And just yes, another thing, the best, the best thing, the best option for that is to, to use it as a coating in a lamination process or in a, a flexo or gravity printing process. What was that last bit you said, flexo or? Flexo or gravure, okay. which are the most common printing process used in all the flexible packaging that you can see. Any packaging oh, oh. that you can see, they are printed. You see, they are printing uh, using that th these two different uh, printing technologies. Okay. That's great. Thank you. Thanks, Anna Maria, for sharing your experience. And, if, and don't hesitate to uh, link us up in the chat if you'd like to post any more information about the projects you're working on that could be interesting sure, to. Yeah. Uh, we'll don't do. hesitate. We'll, we'll make okay. contact afterwards. I think anyway. Yeah. Thank Brilliant. you. Okay. Perfect. Great. Okay. Thanks. Bye. And I wanted to bring in uh, Mete as well, who had a uh, clarification question. Uh, Mete, would you like to ask your question? Yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you very much, Lorena, for the presentation. It was very good. Uh, thank you. I would like to ask you about the active coating. What is the minimum coating weight for flexo and gravure process? It is uh, the okay. first question for me. Okay. Uh, I have another one question extra regarding the coating, ty uh, coating type. Uh, do you have any anti-insect coating product? Okay. Uh, for your first question, uh, there is a lot of development in in the rolling uh, in the equipment that is used is used for for flexography and gravure printing technology. So, um, because the these technology these technolo these te uh, technologies were thought and designed for printing. Okay, and now we are trying to apply coatings uh, using these printing technologies. So there are a lot of uh, research and a lot of new product that has come from uh, this new uh, need. Okay, so uh, right now, uh, if you want to obtain the thicker layer, it can be obtained using gravure printing technology. Okay, but doesn't mean that you cannot achieve that with Flexo. Okay, because it, it can also be achieved. But the main uh, or the main re or the relevant aspect on that it will depend on which which is the substance that you are uh, putting inside of the coating. That means that if it's something that is soluble, that is not a problem. But if 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 it's a dispersion, that means that you have a particle in it. It will depend on the size of the particle. That is better you use one technology or another. Okay, because Depending on of its technology, uh, you have a, a cell in the. It's a cylinder, and you have a cell. And depending on on the technology, this cell will be bigger or smaller. So you need to be sure that the particles that you have dispersed in your coating is smaller than the cell that you have in the cylinder, because if if not, the 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 active coating. That the active substance that is, is inside that is inside of the coating will not come back, will not come, uh, will not go to the final film. I don't know mm -hmm. if I explain myself. 
Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, I am also coming from the Elif Plastic Istanbul, Turkey. We are mainly flexible packaging producer. Okay, so then I am. I do, have you, also ten years experience. You can't cut experience. me. Don't worry. Yeah, you can't cut me. <laughs> I, so, I have also ten years experience about inks and flexible printing, okay, etc. So, so this is the I, same. I really know that, but okay. uh, which analog type, which analog volume. A minimum how many gram we have to apply it is the main question okay the main question it will depend it will depend of the after compound that you have inside and also it will depend of the the product and the cell life that you want to achieve because it depends i mean we have performed some tests with uh, cherry with chicken but if you want to to extend the cell life of chips which is one of the our cases 12 months of course you are going mm -hmm. to you are going to need to to, to apply a, a, a big thickness of the a, a big grammat of the coating, and you have to put a lot of uh, active particles inside in order to 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 be able to to, set, to extend the cell life. And one of the most important things it is that uh, everything that you put inside should not um, uh, have an impact in the organoleptic uh, result mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. of the packaging. So that's why we are, have been working in micro encapsulation and the and control release of these active substances. Okay. Please. Regarding the second question, do you have any work on about anti insect coating? Yeah. Uh, in fact, we are in a national project right now, which is called BioVector, and we are working uh, in developing uh, some coating for avoiding insects. Mm -hmm. For th this one is. For for cabal, for being applied in flexor, mm -hmm. and here we are working with a big company, in a, with a multinational company um, uh, for 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 cabal and for board, and is uh, for fresh product and also for flowers to be able to 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 send that material and try to avoid the the insect uh, in, in inside of board or on boat or or on these kind of things. Yeah, so, so okay. we have some experience on that. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks very much for your questions. And uh, that's great, that leads us on to maybe opening up the conversation a bit more broadly to ask about our key questions. So how do we ensure packaging structures can be best adapted to the products? Um, to open up the conversation a bit, I wanted to ask you uh, if you would like to participants put your video on so we see who is in the room and we can uh, yeah, see each other's faces. So don't hesitate to uh, open your uh, video, your cameras. Um, let's see if one of you are popping up. If not, um, is, it, is it working for you to uh, share your video? Maybe they don't want. <laughs> <laughs> I see some faces now. Brilliant. <laughs> Great. Thanks for setting the good example. And I wanted to ask you as well, Ah, great, I see some people now. Yeah, it's all very comfortable and relaxing. You shouldn't have to get your hair ready for the video. <laughs> You're all looking great. Um, I wanted to ask you as well, so we already heard from uh, Mette and uh, Anne-Marie, who are currently working on research into sustainable packaging. Um, I wanted to ask you to use the reaction button. So if you look at the bottom of your screen, if you're on your laptop, you should see mm. reactions. Yeah. Uh, and if you click it, can you give me a round of applause if you find the reaction button? Uh, yeah, some people found it. Yeah, great. <laughs> All right. So yeah, you have a thumbs up and a round of applause. I'll give you the rest of you a chance to, to find it as well. Yeah, you found it. Brilliant. And can you give me a thumbs up if you are also working on a sustainable packaging project yourself? Just give me a, a thumbs up in the, or even on your, on your video. Okay. Yeah. You are great. Miguel, Sofia, Javier, yes. Natalia, you also are great. Okay, um, so I wanted to ask you what you thought about um, Lorena's uh, five strategies or considerations to take into account. We talked about uh, eco-design, about making packaging, of course, recyclable, but also potentially bio-based, um, new material approaches and new technology uh, for performance. What experience do you have or what would you like to share uh, from the work you've been doing? Is there anyone that would like to uh, jump in? Or I can pick on somebody.
maybe hello sure yeah miguel. miguel hello um hello. so i'm i'm working in a research institute as well in portugal and we work uh, also in these fields uh, mostly in sustainable packaging so we try to work a lot in sustainable packaging but in the end we also work it in um, different applications and also with the uh, petroleum based materials but trying to improve the recyclability and all the, 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 the properties of the, the normal packaging, if you can say between normal and sustainable, because it's very difficult to, to go through the, is, is, my, is my point of view and the, the projects that we have with the companies, we see that, that depending on the company and of the product that they are using the, the packaging is totally different, the, the, the perspective. So we have companies that want to go through very sustainable materials. Uh, they go through all the points that Lorena mentioned and uh, they try to, to reach uh, them. And we have other companies that are also in the market uh, and they don't know. So they are also, uh, um, uh, they have this kind of uh, uh, preoccupation. So they, they want to go through more sustainable process, but the petroleum base will always be the, the, the final final product. So what are the limiting factors do you think? What's, what's holding them back? I think, I think these are a mindset. <laughs> I, I think it's my I don't know because I, I never put them together to discuss that. So I have different discussions with one company, uh, one kind of company, and the others. But they are they have different mindsets. I think okay. it depends on the of their market and the form of them the clients that they they have. I don't know, but I'm trying to understand the, a little bit better the 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 way that this go in the future. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that the, these bio-based materials like uh, PLA, starch waste, and so PHA will have like more 10 years of uh, development to, to go to the market. At least 10 years is my, is my, is my opinion. Because I think in the next, I, right now and the next two, three years will be a, like a niche in the market only for some products. Right. Thanks, Miguel. Does anybody else have this experience that from client to client, there are some very enthusiastic and some that uh, seem very reluctant to get on board with sustainable packaging? Lorena, is it your experience as well? Um, my experience is that, uh, for example, here in Spain, is a lot of people, is, a lot of companies are looking for new solutions, sustainable solutions. Uh, sometimes it's more like marketing. They want something for marketing. It's like, um, um, I mean, there are one of the, I don't know if you realize, it was in Spanish, but one of the materials that um, Andrew uh, saw, it says that it was no, no plastic in it. And it was some, it was a plastic made from yucca. You know, so I mean, that is a plastic. It's bio-based, but it's a plastic. But a lot of, uh, so there is a lot of marketing in there and, and now all, cost, all customers want to have their, their sustainable solution in order to sell more products. Um, but sometimes it's a little bit tricky, you know? Um, so there are a lot of things to do. For sure, we need to change, to change our mind because we cannot change, as I, as I told you before, it is really difficult to think about changing one material by another. We need to think a little bit uh, further, and maybe we, they, they will have they will uh, need new process, uh, or maybe we need to think that we have we, we need to shorten the cell life of some products. So there are there are a lot of things to do to to think about that. Uh, but for sure, companies are pushing about uh, here at least in Spain is uh, recycling. Um, solutions and it is because there is a push from, from Europe uh, that in in 10 years we all, all of us need to have uh, all, all all companies need to have a recycle uh, packaging solution so it's like uh, they are moving on that line more than compostability in right. the case of, of um, uh, America is more compostability and also South America but here in Europe is more recycling Okay, so regional variations as well. I'm afraid, as you might have seen, we have a warning message that we're about to rejoin the main room. Time is, uh, is up for us. Uh, but thank you so much, all of you, for uh, joining the conversation here.
Uh, this was really interesting to hear a bit of your insights from, yeah, I can see a lot of you have a lot of experience here. And uh, yeah, we'll share the results and we will see our illustration as well made by Chris back in the main room. So see you there. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank and you. Thank you.